they appear on the horizon as if they landed from outer space. Strange, otherworldly structures constructed from society's castaways. You might expect aliens to emerge, but instead, they house passionate people with a purposeful way of facing life on this planet. Using the Earth and the environment to solely sustain and support their existence. Ahead of their time, perhaps, but a model for generations to come. I'm meteorologist Jim Cantore. I've made a career of being in the middle of storms, and I love it. But there's more to weather than storms. Some people live where they have to deal with harsh or unusual conditions on a daily basis. On Cantore Stories, we'll take you to these places. You'll meet the people that call them home, and we'll immerse you in their culture. On this episode, the Earthships of Taos. It's the ultimate in eco-housing. Hello, I'm meteorologist Jim Cantori here in Taos, New Mexico. These bizarre buildings called Earthships set the standard for living off the grid. They are almost like living, breathing machines, providing their own energy, water, and food. The building itself can be a cellular unit that encounters the phenomena of the Earth and does everything. So we heat the buildings by thermal mass and sun. We cool the buildings with sun, with a convection engine. Some people have no idea what I'm talking about at all. There's just no frame of reference. It's like you're living in a spaceship. Where are you? You're living in a house made of tires? Some people imagine living without water and without power, and I explained to them, no, this is the most luxurious life I've ever had. They may be luxurious inside, but most of the Earth ships still appear pretty far out on the exterior. The first time I saw one, I was like, what the hell is that? They're, uh, they're what do you call it, Dr. Zeus. I mean, it's like a hobbit village, you know. <laughs> it's kind of a combination of, of uh, outer earthly and Byzantine. They're whatever we want uh, to make them look like. Uh, and like I say, I have built buildings that, that would totally take care of people, but nobody wanted them because they were strange looking. They looked like they landed or whatever. It is true that if you drive past an airship and you're expecting to see something conventional and you see these things, you can't figure out what it is. And maybe it doesn't look beautiful for everybody. I'll tell you why it's beautiful to me is I know why, why it's designed this way and I know what all of the aspects of the airship are about. So I love the way it looks. Plus, it's just weird looking, you know? The Earth ships are located less than two miles from the majestic Rio Grande Gorge. The first ones were constructed in the early 70s, about 15 miles outside the town of Taos in a rural region known as the Landing Zone. Because there's no actual structure here, infrastructure, it was easy to start with nothing, just from the ground up and make it so you're catching your water, you've got your solar power, you know. You're creating a stable environment for, as a building for people to live in. Taos is an eclectic town of about 5,000 permanent residents. It sits in the north central region of New Mexico, about halfway between Albuquerque and Colorado Springs, Colorado. I think Taos is a place that really allows us and encourages us to be ourselves, uh, which accounts for this amazing artistic environment and architects and painters and musicians. Uh, we can really spread our wings and be who we are here in a way that is difficult out in mainstream America. And I think the people here in Taos are, they kind of run at a different speed. There's sort of a term that we use called Taos time, and that means that people are sort of just a little bit slower, quieter, not so much in a hurry. It's sort of the, uh, the opposite of the New York Minute. Earth ships have been built in every state and over 17 countries. But with over 300 sunny days a year, Taos is the perfect place for them. The house is oriented south so that it catches solar gain in the winter and in the summer when the sun goes back up. It's shaded 
So the house in return passively heats and cools itself through thermal mass and conduction. There are basic fundamentals that make up an Earthship. Besides solar, they are designed to utilize wind power for additional energy. They produce food in a greenhouse that is designed to take advantage of the south-facing windows. They have a contained sewage treatment system which takes water from sinks and showers, called gray water, which is used to water indoor gardens. It's gathered again to flush toilets and then goes into a septic tank. At this point, it's called black water and it's extracted again and used on outdoor plants. One of the most important features of the Earthship is harvesting water from the roof, since this area only averages 12 inches of rainfall annually. So we basically flush the toilet with water we took a shower in yesterday. So you, we're basically never letting a drop of water go once we catch it from the sky. The roof is a basin that catches water and stores it in cisterns, and we use it four times. We not only reuse the water with this system, but we make it so no sewage leaves the building. These obviously aren't your typical three-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath houses of suburbia. Then again, if you choose to live in one, mainstream probably isn't a word on your doormat. Just saying. Go fly! <laughs> so I have a friend, and when she heard that I go out and I turn my panels, because I don't have to, but if I turn my panels, I get more power all during the day. I track the sun. And she said, you know, for me, she says, I want power. I don't want to think about power. I don't want to turn panels. I don't want to think about it not being sunny and not having power. That person would be miserable in this house. I think after a while, we maybe feel like I was um, living under the earth. And I just would want to be more on top of the earth. And tradition growing up with houses being seen, this would be kind of hard for me to adjust to. But the concept's great. So, I mean, I would take the, the panels and all the, the guts of what they're doing, but put it in a more traditional style house for someone my age. Sally Margolin helped build her own Earthship. For her, there's no other way to live. And I really think once you've lived like this, why would you not want to live like this? And how important is that for the world? Well, I hope there are enough people who do this that it makes a difference. You know, I'm making a difference somehow for the planet. And if enough people are doing that, can't be bad. Margolin's Earthship is one of the early ones. It's a little more old school than the modern versions. This is the, co the custom compost toilet, which is basically a five-gallon bucket sitting inside this box. And then this... Um, pail has peat moss in it, so you use the peat moss and you put that in the bucket after you use the compost toilet. Many people of today's technology generation are finding value in this type of sustainable living. I love the fact that my conscience feels a lot better than when I was living in the middle of the suburbs, not knowing where my power was coming from or where the water was coming from or what it had been through. It's a state of consciousness that will resonate forever with Margolin. They're taking me out of my house feet first. Because, you know, when you, A, when you build your own home, I think it's probably pretty hard to say, oh, I'm going to go live somewhere else. And B, when you build a home because you want to live like this and you want to live close to nature and you want to be in touch with what's going on in the sky and the weather, and then to think that I would move from here to what? So, yeah, feet first. That's how I'm leaving. Coming up on Cantori Stories, meet the man who launched the Earthship. Well, I'm a pioneer, I'm a visionary, I'm, uh, you know, I'm all of that, but uh, I'm a human. And I sort of am excited about where humanity can go. He's his own man. He's got a vision and a real commitment. This is not just about being an architect, it's about helping people. 